Fabricadabra at LPL presents Kimono Slippers. Materials that you'll need include one quarter yard of an outer material, such as canvas or upholstery fabric, one quarter yard of inner material, such as fleece, scissors, thread, a fabric pencil, pins, a hand sewing needle and a sewing machine, puffy paint, an iron, and of course a pattern. We are going to get ours from laurenefabrications.blogspot.com. You can use the conveniently located QR code in the bottom left hand corner of the screen to access Lauren E's instructions and her pattern. The pattern is made for a size 9 to 9 and a half women's shoe. I happen to wear a size 6 and a half to 7 women's shoe. So I estimated I would need to decrease the size of the pattern by between 85 to 90 percent. I did this when I printed it out and then I placed my foot on pat pattern piece A so that I could verify that that was the correct size for me. Piece A is the bottom or sole of the slipper. Always, uh, when you're cutting out your fabric, you want to make sure that you transfer the red and blue marks to your fabric pieces. This is going to be really important when you're putting the slippers together. Pieces B and C use the same template and need to be taped with a smaller piece to make the proper length. You can see that here. Piece B is cut along the solid lines. PC is cut along the solid lines except at the toe end where it is cut at the dotted line. You may want to print this page out twice so that you can have two separate patterns. Cut out your fabric pieces for the first slip slipper and set those aside. Then cut out the pattern pieces for the second slipper. While you're cutting out the second slipper fabric pieces, you want to make sure that they're opposite from the first pair, just like with our feet. And I suggest that you do each slipper separately. So do the first slipper, and then after you're finished with that, do your second slipper. Place the outer and inner fabrics um, of the B pieces right sides together, pin those along the curve, and sew with a quarter inch seam. Do the same thing for the fabric of the C pieces, pinning them right sides together along the curve, and sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance. Next, clip the curved seams. Uh, you do that, as you'll see in this picture, by simply snipping the edges before you get to the, um, to the actual stitches. You do not want to cut your stitches. You're gonna turn the sewn pieces right sides out and iron flat at the seams along that curve. Next, you wanna open up the pieces again and you're going to take B and C and you're going to put them right sides together and pin in place along that um, straight edge. You're going to sew that at a quarter inch seam allowance. Open that sewn piece again and iron the seam flat. Then you're going to fold it again along the long seam with right sides out, so the right sides facing you, and you're going to iron. And this is what the uh, single piece is now going to look like, kind of like antlers upside down. Now we've come to a kind of difficult part, but it's not insurmountable. If at any point during this you have a problem, I suggest coming to the main library and going to our makerspace and um, asking for help there because they should be able to help you figure this out. What you're going to do is you're going to pin the inner piece, the fleece fabric of piece A, which is the sole, to the inner piece, meaning the fleece fabric of the BC piece you just sewed. Okay, you're going to put those right sides together. You're going to match the back seam, so the seam, uh, the short seam that you made, you're going to match that with the red triangle mark from the pattern. You're going to start pinning and then you're going to make it to, you're going to stop pinning at the uh, sort of the toe part of the slipper where the blue dot marks are. You're going to do that on each side. Next up, you're going to sew those pinned pieces using a quarter inch seam allowance again. You're going to start at the blue dot mark on one edge of the slipper toe and you're going to end at the other. 
Now this can be very tricky to do, especially around that deep curve around the heel. So you're going to want to put your sewing machine at, if not the lowest speed you have, somewhere near that low speed. The slower you go, the easier this will become for you. So don't try and rush through this because you really want your seam to be uh, a really nice curve, not all jaggedy because it's going to make the, sh the slipper itself look jaggedy when you turn it inside out. This is what it should look like when you're finished. Now you're going to do the same for the outer pieces of A and B, C. So that's going to be the canvas or the upholstery uh, fabric. You are going to end up with a sort of in a hollowed out flower shape, much like a tulip. Now you're going to take the whole piece and turn it right side out. Then you're going to take the inner and outer piece of C, so the fleece and the canvas, and you're going to pin it to only the inner piece of A. And the inner piece of A would be the, um, the fleece sole. You're going to need to make uh, probably a few adjustments around the curved edges to make the, everything line up and um, not have too many crinkles in the fabric. Now you're going to sew that using, a, again, a quarter inch seam allowance from as close to the blue dot as you can get to the edge of piece C. Then you're going to clip the curve, meaning you're just going to take your uh, scissors and snip around that curve without cutting the stitches. Now we're going to take a little break. You need to check the fitting of the slipper on your foot before proceeding any further. If there's any problems and it doesn't fit right, you're going to probably need to rip out your seams and make adjustments and then re-sew. Next up, we're going to pin the inner and outer piece B to only the outer piece A. And the the outer piece A would be the sole and it'll be the canvas part of, or the upholstery part of the sole. Now we're going to sew with the usual one quarter inch seam allowance and we're going to clip the curve. At this point, and only if you prefer, you can finish the edges on these seams uh, by using a zigzag stitch. Just make sure that it doesn't, uh, that it follows along with your original stitches. Next, you're gonna turn the whole piece right side out, and that's gonna leave a kind of a flap hanging out. That's actually your second slipper toe, and you're just gonna tuck that right into the first slipper toe. At this point, um, I noticed that I had a little bit on the edge here that was um, not sewed in, so I just hand sewed that, that in, in place so that it wouldn't be sticking out anymore. We're into the home stretch now. You're going to turn your slipper over and you're going to use puffy paint to make small dots all over the sole of the slipper. And then you're going to let it dry according to the instructions on the back of the puffy paint bottle. Now, I know I said we were in the home stretch, but I lied because now you have to repeat all of the pinning and sewing steps for your second slipper. Fabra Cadabra. Here are my finished slippers. One thing to note is that they're both for the same foot. <laughs> I messed up when I was cutting out my patterns and so be careful that you cut uh, your second slipper opposite to your first slipper. The other thing is that one of them's a little bit larger than the other and that's because I had used a smaller um, seam allowance than one quarter. So I suggest using the one quarter inch allowance but it's up to you how you want to make this fit your foot. Thanks for watching and happy sewing!